Hi and welcome back to what will be the very last of the content videos for our journey through 3-4 chemistry. So let's get started. You may remember that we looked at calorimetry in Unit 3. Essentially calorimetry is an experiment where we can determine the amount of energy released from a fuel or substance or even a reaction by measuring how much a body of water changes in temperature. Then we can use Q equals MC delta T to calculate the energy transferred from the substance into the water itself. Remembering that we use 4.18 joules per uh, degree C per gram and that we need the change in temperature of the substance so it's initial temperature and final temperature. Okay, and then we use not this one gram per mil but the 0 0.997 that is in our uh, data booklet now. So we're going to revisit calorimetry, this time looking at a way to work out the amount of energy that's given off by food. And in this case, we can see that we can do food calorimetry experiments by taking a piece of the food, burning it under a test tube or tin or something that will absorb the, uh, allow the water to sit in and absorb the energy from that burning into the water. This, of course, has downsides in that we can lose heat radiating out from the sides um, to the environment. We also get things like incomplete combustion and so forth of the food, which can add errors into our investigation. So if we think about this, we can use the same sort of calculations as we did in Unit 3. So let's have a look at this one. This one asks us what is the energy required to raise the temperature of 650 mils of water from 18 degrees C to the boiling temperature. So we're looking for the energy required, remembering that in Q equals MC delta T, Q is the heat energy. So this is going to be Q, and that's what we're looking for to raise the temperature of 650 mils of water. Okay, so we can use the density is equal to 0 0.997 grams per mil to work out the mass of the water. From 18 degrees, so this is our initial, to the boiling temperature. So this is getting us to remember that the boiling temperature of water is 100 degrees C, so that's our T2. Once we have all this, we can substitute it into our formula. So 650 multiplied by 0 0.997 multiplied by, of course, the specific heat capacity of water, which is in our data booklet, 4.18 joules per degree C per gram. And then our delta T, which is going to be 100 minus 18. So if we put that into our calculator, we should end up with 2221251618 joules. This, of course, is a value that has way too many significant figures. Looking at the question, we have been given three significant figures. This also works with our specific heat capacity. So if we want to take it to three sig figs, going to convert into kilojoules first, and I'm going to get 222 two, two kilojoules and that will give us three significant figures. If we look at the answer that's been provided, we can see that it gets 223 kilojoules, and this is the difference between using one gram per mil or the 0 0.997 grams per mil. So remember that because it can put you outside the range of the accepted values for the exam. So when we're looking at calorimetry of food, obviously, the incomplete combustion, losing lots of energy out to the sides, is a detriment to accurate data accumulation. So generally what we see is that solution calorimeters are used or bomb calorimeters. So the solution calorimeter essentially we use when we have a reaction that is going to take past in solution. This could be an exothermic redox reaction, might be a dissolution, something like that. In this case, the reaction is going to go in on inside the solution. The thermometer will 
measure the change in temperature of the solution and we can insulate the outsides and put a lid on in order to reduce the heat transfer between the environment and the solution. A bond calorimeter, on the other hand, is um, a much more sophisticated piece of uh, equipment. It has a highly conductive cup in the center, which would be stacked with your fuel or the food that you're wanting to burn, your sample cup. This is referred to as the bomb. It is flushed with oxygen and then ignited electronically. So this will cause a spark and cause it to combust inside here. Because this is now surrounded on all sides by the water, any heat transfer out is going to be absorbed by the water and then that is inside an insulated jacket as well. So you can measure the difference between the can where the water is and the jacket and work out an accurate change in temperature. So these calorimeters are a little bit more sophisticated. We tend to use the solution calorimeter a lot. We don't have access to a bomb calorimeter, but a bomb calorimeter will reduce the amount of heat transfer much more than a solution and also can provide a greater amount of oxygen to ensure a better combustion. The other thing about calorimeters is that we can calibrate them. We can put a known amount of electrical energy into the calorimeter and measure the change in temperature that we see in the water. Once we've worked out the energy required to raise the temperature by one degree, this is referred to as the calorimeter constant or the calibration factor. Okay, once we have that calibration factor, we can determine the amount of energy that something is given out simply by measuring the change in temperature. So first things first, we need to go back and use our E equal V I T that we saw with Faraday's law so that the energy in joules is equal to the voltage multiplied by the current and the time that is it is applied in seconds. Once we have that amount of energy, we can divide by the temperature change that we saw in the calorimeter and that will give us our calorimeter constant. Let's have a look at a couple of questions to see how this works. When we solve calorimetry, always go by the steps. Step one will be to determine your calibration constant from data that is given. Step two will then be to determine the energy change for the reaction performed by looking at uh, the delta T in the calibration factor and then we want to convert this into the energy change required for the reaction because remember the skill that VCAR is looking for is us to be able to write thermochemical equations with a stated delta H. So if we look at this question here we have a calorimeter that contains 100 milliliters of water and is calibrated by passing a current so this is going to be I okay at a potential difference of six volts so this is v through a calorimeter for 60 seconds this is time and then we're told that 2.7 degrees is the temperature change this information is our calibration okay so this is the calibration information that we have been given the information that follows this is related to the substance and the amount of energy given out by this. So we can see that the experiment takes 2.35 grams of calcium chloride dissolved in the calorimeter and the temperature then changed by 4.5 degrees C. This mass is to get the number of mole of calcium chloride in order to calculate the delta H. Don't confuse this mass with the mass of water and try and use Q equals MC delta T here. Okay, so we're going to use this 100 mils and move on from there. So let's have a look at what we're going to do. So we need to use the formulas for our calibration factor. We're going to use the formula E divided by delta T because we want to work out the energy per gram uh, or per degree, sorry. And then energy, we're using the same one that we used from Faraday's law. Energy is equal to the voltage multiplied by the current multiplied by the time it is applied. So if we work that out, we were told that we had 6 volts. Pay attention to significant figures. For 2.73 amps, 
and it was applied for 60 seconds. This gives us a total of 982.8 joules of energy that were placed into the calorimeter. So if we can then work out our calibration factor, we have 982. Oops, can't write. There we go. 982.8 joules divided by the 2.7 degree temperature change that we were told occurred. This gives us a calibration factor of 364 joules per degree C per, yes, joules per degree C. So it takes 364 joules to raise the water in this calorimeter by one degree C. The information from the question, so this is step one, the information from the question tells us that the temperature change for the reaction, okay, so we want energy released, is going to be the calibration factor multiplied by delta T, and we so we've got 364, and it was a temperature change of 4.5 degrees for the reaction. So when we do this, we end up with a 1638.0 joules of energy being released by that reaction. And then step three is to calculate delta H, remembering that delta H is the energy divided by the number of mole. So first of all, we need to work out the number of mole of calcium chloride, which is going to be the mass of calcium chloride, which was 2.35 and then divide that by 1118, which was the molar mass of calcium chloride. And when we do that, we get 0 0.021 mole of calcium chloride. And then once we have the mole, we can take our amount of energy, which is... 1638.0 and divide by our number of mole. That will give us the joules per mole, which is going to be 78,000 joules per mole. But we have to change into kilojoules because delta H is a kilojoule value. So that will be 78 kilojoules per mole. So that gives us our delta H. Then to write the thermochemical equation, it was for the dissolution of calcium chloride. So we're going to have to write the equation for the dissolving back to year 11, CaCl2 solid, because it starts out as solid if we're going to dissolve it. In the presence of H2O, we'll turn into CaCl2 aqueous, with a delta H and it gave off that energy, it caused the temperature to go up. So it's going to be negative 78 kilojoules per mole. And then we have finished the equation because we have written the thermochemical equation. Okay, another question I want you, this one we are, uh, don't need to do step one. There's no calibration information here. So we're just taking a 0.654 gram sample of charcoal burnt in a bomb calorimeter, making it more accurate, less heat loss to the environment. The temperature of 350 mils of water in the calorimeter rose by 9.15 degrees. So you've been told to use the specific heat capacity of water and determine the heat of combustion of charcoal. Pause the video and then come back to have a look at the answer. Okay, so hopefully you use Q equals MC delta T using the 350 multiplied by 0 0.997 and our temperature change of 9.15 to get 13346.29 joules. Then we're asked for the heat of combustion with charcoal. We haven't been told it's pure coal or carbon. So remembering this won't have a molar amount. So we're going to get a more of an energy content than an enthalpy value in that we will get kilojoules per gram. So what I've done here is taken the amount of energy and divided by 
0.654 grams to get a total of 20,407 joules per gram and then convert it into kilojoules to get our three significant figures for the answer. Okay, now another question. Hopefully you're feeling pretty confident with these and you can give this one a go yourself. We have 2.35 grams of calcium chloride dissolved into 100 mils of water. The temperature increases from 21 to 25.5 and the calorimeter is calibrated by passing the current through. In this case, we have been given the experimental information first and then you have been given the calibration information second, okay, for working out your calibration factor. So you're going to take this information, the current voltage and time with this temperature change to work out your calibration factor, and then you're going to work out the calcium chloride by looking at the change in temperature at the start. This is going to be very similar to the first one we did. Have a go and come back and check your answer. Okay, hopefully you realize that numbers were exactly the same as the one that we looked at earlier. This time though, the information was just given in a different way. Your calibration information can be provided to you in a number of ways. What you've got to remember is for the calibration factor, you just need to know the amount of energy given out during the calibration and divide it by the change in temperature. Sometimes you will also see calibration being given by things like benzoic acid, or chemical calibration. So essentially these are usually very pure substances. If they're not pure, we have a source of error. So, and you work out the number of moles. So you'll be given a delta H for that substance and that process, and then a way to work out a number of mole and you multiply by the number of mole to get the number of energy given. So you're just using the formula that we use in the last step for your calibration as well. I'll dig out some of those exam style questions for us to have a look at together in class. Okay, quick multiple choice question to end off this video, which is already long enough. And basically this one says that a student calibrated a calorimeter using an electric heating coil with a current of 150 amps with a potential difference of 4.5 volts straight away we want to be thinking that we're going to be using E equals V I T in this case as applied for two and a half minutes. So we're going to have to convert this to seconds. And a digital probe recorded a temperature of 5.35 degrees C. The value of the calibration factor in joules per degree C is going to be, it's going to be our calibration factor is equal to the energy divided by delta T. Okay, so we should be able to put that into our calculator and work out whether it's A, B, C, or D. And when we do that, we should see that the answer is in fact A, 189. So we take our VIT multiply after converting our two and a half minutes into seconds, which is going to be 150 seconds to get our energy. Okay, that's it. Now it's just on to practice questions, practice exams, and finishing up. And I'll see you in class.